Okey. Saya start Cikgu Nain English tau. Uh, tak kisah. Okey. Assalamualaikum and good morning everyone. Welcome uh, to our session where we have the pleasure of speaking with professionals in various fields. I am the host today. My name is Aiman Shazmin Ben Shansuddin. Here, I am also bringing several of my friends to join in this interview session. Muhammad Hazi Ahnaf Ben Rosni, Sharul Adli Ben Zulpika Husni, Muhammad Hakim Ben Zantilani, and Muhammad Hazim Shami Ben Muhammad. So today we have a special guest with us, Mr. Shazwan Safi Mustafa, an exceptional engineer with a wealth of experience. Mr. Shazwan has an impressive background and in engineering, and today we will delve into his educational journey and the company he currently manages. Let's give a warm welcome to Mr. Shazwan Safi Mustafa. And Mr. Shazwan, how are you today? And do you have anything to speak for briefing one or two words before we start the interview? All right, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh, everyone. And uh, my name my name is Shazwan Saufi bin Mustafa. And first of all, I would like to uh, thank you to every one of you for having me for and invite me for this interview session. And actually, uh, I'm not kind of uh, really have a good experience bone. <laughs> I just have uh, around five years of experience in uh, professional as in engineering industries. And I have um, for my background, I will tell you a little bit of my background. So um, actually, I am uh, I have a in a, for my education background. I have a bachelor degree in uh, mechanical engineering um, from University of uh, Kuala Lumpur, and I also uh, have a diploma in uh, mechanical engineering as well from uh, UiTM Pulau Pinang. And for my uh, working uh, background, I have I've been working uh, with uh, three companies. And my first company was uh, with uh, Honda Malaysia Snapper Hat uh, at Alu Gajah Melaka. And I've started working there uh, as a quality engineer, as a fresh graduate, as a quality engineer. And then um, uh, mainly as a quality engineer, uh, I have been responsible uh, for make sure all the product uh, in a uh, Honda build a car as a Honda is a uh, meet a quality standards and conducting inspection and test. So that's that's my basically my my uh, job scope. Um, I've been working there around uh, almost uh, three years. No, sorry, almost four years. I've been working in Honda, and next um, I've been moved to uh, Right Bus International. At Klang, it is, it is a UK based company and at the right bus, I've been working as a supplier quality engineer and as a supplier quality engineer, uh, basically I'm uh, managing and maintaining the quality of the components that been used for making a bus and I've also uh, have to make a connection with the vendors and make sure all the our suppliers uh, have sent us a good quality uh, and make all the standards of uh, of the parts. So uh, and next, uh, currently, I've just moved uh, to the KL in uh, Ecotech uh, Sendamber Hut uh, as a uh, quality engineer in a senior position. And I've been, um, Ecotech is a subsidiary of a Proton. Uh, mainly, we supply uh, uh, infotainment head units. If you guys know, uh, in uh, most of the cars nowadays, they, we have a uh, infotainment that, that, uh, display, car display uh, for a radio, for um, radio that been uh, have a display, uh, you know. So, uh, yeah. So, uh, 
my company been uh, supply for a proton and also mainly um since you know uh proton have a, a collaboration with the Geely, right so mainly uh we also supply for a Geely new production so uh yeah same uh, quality is uh, about uh we we have to make sure the product is meet the standards of uh, for example uh world standards punya uh punya quali qualification lah means like uh, all the product must have a, a standard of quality so uh quality engineer tugas dia is to make sure all the product runs and meet the uh, quality standards. So how to meet the quality standard? So we must follow all the several several punya tests lah. Uh, so so that that's basically what I've did. So yeah, I think that's uh, several things that I can share with you guys uh, of uh, a little bit of my background. Okay. So, yeah. mm -hmm. Okay, Mr. Shazwan, mm -hmm. um, why did you choose engineering instead of uh, agriculture or architect or mm, like culinary? All right, as it, uh, okay, that, that, that is a good question. All right, um, especially uh, for you guys, uh, I think uh, you guys also uh, almost finished uh, study yeah only two sem uh, left and i i believe that uh, you guys as well have uh, uh, the reason why you guys uh, pro uh, choose engineering as uh, to further you guys may study right so yeah. same same as me um um the re my my i think um, my interest in engineering uh, was since I was uh, was a kid actually. So why why because of um the thing is I I I interest with uh I live to see uh, I live to know how things work you know basically if we see a car then automatically we uh, in, this is me yeah I will think that uh how this work how this car works you no. Know? Why? How how can it move? So from there, uh, I believe uh, it generate my interest in engineering. So uh, to know how that car works and to experience how how uh, it works. So I think I believe engineering is the uh, the the I mean like the uh the scope or the career that uh that will fulfill how i want to know that things so yeah i, I think that's uh engineering uh it's like a perfect fit uh for my uh, interest okay so yeah i think i think the curiosity of to know things uh works is lead me to be uh, to to become to, to possess with the engineering field so that's it. I, I hope that answer your question, Azik. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Shazwan. Okay, siapa tu? Okay, Hazim. Uh, Hazim, okay, Hazim. Okay, so next is my question. Mm -hmm. Okay, my question is, since the COVID epidemic, mm -hmm. how has the engineering field changed? Okay. Um. <clears throat> for okay, since pandemic, so uh, I've also uh faced this this situation right back in two thousand twenty, where uh we have been uh facing the COVID. Is it? So of course uh uh when we get to lockdown. Yeah, everyone have to uh, to stay at their home. Actually, uh, of course, there has been impact as well in our industries, especially um, uh, not just engineering. I I guess I could say 
every every single industries in our world have been affected by this you know so um the question is what uh, how engineering field change that is it so yeah as you know um my uh, my field is been uh, we are uh, manufactured a car you know so the car have, must be manufactured in the plant is it in the factory so if if uh, during the covid of course when the it's locked down of course our factory as well need to be shut down no as as um uh, uh, engineer that been working in the plant in means like um there's you you guys have to understand there's a uh, several kind of engineering some of the engineer they just uh, required to work um by computer means like they don't need to attend on that plant cap again they just need a computer the test has been run in the computer but some of the uh feel we require to attend ourselves in the plan you know so uh, kita punya kerja akan ada bila ada problem dekat plan uh, you understand so um when uh, covid hit us so um like um during that time i was in in honda so everything change uh, from a physical attend we change to the um what we call it uh, all everything is online for example all the meetings all the discussion we change from the physical meetings to the online so um i think uh most of the industry face this situation so uh what i what i can say that um the challenge is uh especially from uh, if the companies they, they are totally 100% using a physical attend they must uh, adapt with the uh, current technologies which is we need to use we can say almost 100% of online everything is online so we need to change that so i think um nowadays all the companies must be prepared with that you know we must to use all the technologies we cannot use the old ways of all kinds of uh, working working style you no know? so we must ready uh, physically and also we we, we must flow, follow with the technologies so i think um uh covid highlight us on the how to adapt adapt with the, the that kind of situation you know so um if we cannot we if if we cannot go with the physical attend then we must no have the option of having a like online meeting and everything so for me is we um the changes is uh one of it is that no we move to the technologies way we move to the online things every the way that, that that's for 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 my that's what i i've been facing uh, my experience during the covid lah. because we kita tak boleh attend pun masuk uh, factory ke apa but masing-masing uh, semua kat rumah masing-masing what we need to do is we during that lockdown uh, we plan uh, every single day every single week you know we plan how to settle this project you know what what is the plan you know uh, of course uh, all the kita punya plan schedule kan untuk during that time i was um um being uh, lead the project for uh, honda city uh, 2020 you know the the current punya model punya honda city you know so during that time uh, we plan to launch that on mid of the 2020 you know so <clears throat> the project was started since uh, 2019 then we targeted to launch uh, on the 
uh, if I'm not mistaken, June of 2020. So you guys know we've been uh, hit uh, by uh, COVID from March, is it? So uh, of course. So during that time, we 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 plan we plan how to settle it by, and Alhamdulillah, the project was launched uh, during end of the 2020. If you guys remember the Honda City, yeah, that was part of my my pro my team and my project as well. So yeah. Ah, uh, so. <laughs> cara kerja kita daripada traditional working style yeah. akan uh, berubah daripada uh, modern uh, technology working style. Yeah. yeah, yes, yes. That that's what I think uh, how the engineering field change, you know. Dan masa tu juga mm -hmm. uh, projek yang Encik Shazwan kendalikan ni mm -hmm. uh, tergendala lah terpaksa di, uh, yeah. di benar. Dalam uh, engineering punya uh, kerja ni kan, kita uh, kita bekerja start with a plan, with a schedule. Sebelum kita start projek, kita memang akan prepare the complete punya schedule. Okay, complete punya schedule ni dia bukan you just main letak. You you kena ada every single of the plan. Okay, yang ni nak nak selesaikan ni, kena ada plan ni. Plan ni pula boleh pecah pula berapa lama duration all the test, all the bila inspection, bila bila nak pasang kat sini, bila nak pasang. So, uh, so bila uh, kita punya plan and then dia ada kekangan dekat sesuatu masa, of course kita akan kita akan our schedule akan um, ter, tergendala lah. Ter, ya, yeah, dia akan beri, mengikut. Tapi as an engineer, that's the challenge. Engineer ni, engineer ni dia buat apa? Engineer ni dia dia menyelesaikan masalah. Itu memang itu memang hakikatnya. Kalau tak ada masalah kat plan, kita tak akan ada kerja. Kita duduk je lah kan. So, so bil bila uh, schedule tu dah berubah itu pun salah satu challenge untuk kita what's what's the plan so what's the plan what is the plan b sebab dia kita punya boss dia nak tahu kita, kereta tu dia nak launch je betul tak so how to answer uh, apa yang kita nak bagi uh, jawapan kita apa kita kena ada kita kena provide uh, the plan the plan b lah so The fastest that we can settle this, ah uh, kita bagi tarikh. And dengan tarikh tu kita bagi reason apa 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 plan kita. Kita bagi complete minute plan. So that that's plan tu. Kalau kita perlu buat kalau uh, macam macam tarikh lah kan COVID. Kalau kita nak tunggu bila plan baru boleh buka dan baru kita nak start discuss. You guys rasa boleh ke? Well, creator to launch uh, end of the In the in the same year 2020, you boleh boleh rasa ke? So maksudnya, I rasa masa tu kita masuk the 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 uh, plan boleh jalan balik during June, kan? So almost tiga bulan kita tak buat apa apa kan? So sebab tu saya cakap tadi kita tak boleh tunggu plan buka baru kita nak masuk meeting. Okay, kita nak plan apa kita nak buat ni kan? So during the three months of the lockdown kita kena ada optional sebab tu saya cakap kita kena create all the um, online punya meeting everything tak mudah untuk mudah mungkin mudah untuk kita untuk maksudnya generasi kita eh maksudnya tapi saya bekerja bukan dengan semua bayar-bayar bayar-bayar saya bayar-bayar which is uh, mean like uh, ada our bosses also, as well dia umur pun dah 50 and orang dah orang dia orang dah bekerja like almost 20 years using all all punya macam uh, tra traditional punya farm tak kadang-kadang dia tahu pakai laptop ni pun untuk meeting meeting dia dia ah uh, faham tak so sebab tu kita dalam 3 bulan tu kita kena uh, cepat adapt dengan situation tu so kita kena ajar dia oh 
Microsoft team okey macam mana nak tekan untuk kita senang kita kita generasi kita kita just langgar aje kan kita tekan 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 kita tak takut kadang-kadang untuk orang yang dia lebih dia tak biasa dengan benda ni kan uh, ataupun uh, sama juga mungkin macam you guys you guys ada degree kan ada dah biasa kan dengan laptop dengan everything sama macam kita dah buat assignment using all the technology so that that kita kita expose dengan benda tu advantage lah advantage untuk you guys so sebab bagus untuk tu tapi dalam dalam organisasi sesuatu pekerjaan ni you guys insyaallah bila keluar nanti jadi engineer bila you guys jadi engineer you guys ada orang bawah you guys faham tak you guys ada you guys kalau saya saya akan ada technician saya kan beberapa orang technician bawah and ada operator bawah kita macam some of them dia orang tak ada exposure benda tu faham dia orang some of them dia ada yang macam kalau dekat plan kita tu macam uh, operator dia orang kalau kita ambil yang SPM bukan kita nak cakap pasal education tapi expo I mean like the experience yang dia orang hadapi mungkin dia orang lepas SPM dia orang terus masuk kerja dia orang tak pernah lagi tau uh, I mean like uh, using Microsoft Teams even all the uh, Microsoft Office faham tak so bila bila uh, covid melanda kan so bukan kita je yang nak nak kena kita perlukan seluruh team kita untuk jayakan projek kita so semua kena ada dalam meeting tu semua kena ada so semua orang kena start guna guna laptop ni semua kena start guna all this kind of technology so yeah so that that's apa yang i nak uh, uh, emphasize yang kat sini lah semua semua dari segi dari from the management until yang paling bawah kita kena ada i mean like the skills untuk adapt dengan situation macam ni Cabarlah untuk yeah. pandemik ni. Betul-betul. Masa tu korang kat mana? Sam satu? Diploma. Masa tu masih diploma lagi. Oh diploma lagi. Ah, diploma. Tapi syok lah cuti kan? Ah, tak, tak, ah. tak juga. Ah, tak juga lah. Ah, kena, kena adapt juga. Kena, kena adapt juga kan? Terus Sama kan. juga. Daripada korang pergi kelas, tiba-tiba kena bagi online kelas. Beza bila you guys pergi kelas, you guys attend uh, dengan lecturer, mengajar physically, tiba-tiba kena ajar online, tu pun challenge juga. Macam tu lah juga kami. Macam tu lah juga kami. Daripada kita boleh pegang kereta dan sampai kita tak boleh. Kita kena guna all the experience yang masa kita pernah okay, cakap oh benda ni macam ni, macam ni, macam ni. Faham tak? Hmm, sama juga. So that's that's the challenge. That's the challenge. Hmm. Uh, okay, Encik Sazwan. Dengar? Ini dengar siapa ni? Siapa? Hakim uh, lah. Hakim, Hakim. Oh, yeah. Okay, Hakim. Uh, soalan seterusnya. Mm. Uh, pada pendapat Encik Sazwan lah kan. Mm-hmm. Uh, masih relevan ke bidang in- engineering ni untuk dipelajari? Pada zaman sekarang lah. Selepas era COVID ni kan. Uh-huh. Uh. Masih Oi. relevan ke macam... Ya. Sama. Sama. Soalan soalan sensitif tu. <laughs> <laughs> uh, for me ya, uh, engineering ni okay. First of all, saya 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 tanya kan, saya tanya you guys lah, apa you guys faham engineer ni? Engineer ni dia buat apa? Apa apa keperluan engineer dalam dunia ni? Kalau korang faham? Untuk menyelesaikan masalah. Okay. Develop develop sesuatu. Develop sesuatu. Syarul ada Syarul. So, Syarul macam ada banyak. Kehidupan. Uh, mencipta undi baru. Mencipta undi baru. Me- menyelesaikan masalah <laughs> untuk develop benda baru. Okay. So saya tanya you guys lah. Kat dunia ni ada masalah tak? Banyak ke sikit masalah? Banyak. Banyak. So relevan ke tak kalau <laughs> engineer? Perlu tak engineer dalam dunia ni? Sangat perlu. Sangat perlu kan? So untuk saya absolutely uh, engineering punya uh, study ni masih perlu cuma kita, macam saya cakap tadi kita adapt dengan uh, what kind of problem yang dunia face sekarang faham tak 
Dulu mungkin uh, orang kata ni 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 basic lah eh. Dulu mungkin orang kata uh, orang nak pergi dari satu tempat ke satu tempat mungkin dia orang jalan kaki. So dia orang kata dia orang nak cepat dia orang buat apa? Dia orang buat motor, dia orang buat kereta. Okey, tapi sekarang motor dengan kereta dah ada. Tapi dia orang nak guna from diesel tu pada EV pula kan. Sekarang ni kan yang famous yeah. sekarang EV ke Tesla lah dan dah beranak pinak dah macam-macam kind of uh, brand lah yang ada kan. So to make it relevant, you guys kena uh, expose dengan apa problem sekarang ni. Faham tak? Maksudnya apa yang apa yang demand sekarang ni dekat industri ni. Faham tak? Apa apa demand yang um, Um, uh, uh, demand kind of uh, problem of industries yang lebih lebih memerlukan engineer uh, so korang tak I mean like korang before before kita proceed untuk uh, further our studies kita mesti kena buat research dulu lah mungkin waktu saya dulu uh, mungkin yang orang dulu dulu mungkin dah tak relevan dah bukan tak tak relevan means like um, As you guys know kan, kita punya graduates in engineering ni memang berlambat, betul tak? Betul sangat. Betul. Tapi to make you guys uh, special from others, you guys kena ada something extra from uh, others uh, um, graduate graduates yeah. yang lain lah. I mean like, okay, kalau korang ada uh, engineering punya uh, background, punya degree, tapi uh, mungkin syllabus tu sama dengan ada tapi apa yang nak buatkan korang special is uh, for me you guys boleh focus on the search faham tak faham so uh, tu, nak jawab yang relevan ke tak relevan ke uh, sebenarnya korang sendiri yang kena uh, make Sorry. you guys relevan untuk the industries macam saya cakap saya kalau kalau korang, kalau saya masuk dalam industri ni saya jumpa macam-macam orang yang lagi experience lah daripada saya. Kalau saya ni cakap lima tahun ni orang kata ikan bilis sih sebenarnya. Ha, tapi ada orang yang dah 30 tahun dalam industri tapi macam mana dia orang nak buat dia orang ni relevan dengan dia orang punya studies yang sebelum ni. Sebab satu benda is dia orang never stop learning never stop learning. Maksudnya teknologi ni dia memang dia macam dia laju tau, dia macam train tau. Teknologi ni. Korang belajar hari ni, esok dia dah keluar dah yang baru, kan? So sebab tu saya nak cakap even though you guys dah ada 30 tahun experience, tapi suddenly when it's come out a new technologies, bila you baru nak belajar, you means like that's the first day you get, you belajar pasal Uh, teknologi yang baru tu, faham tak? So, to make it, re- to answer is relevant or not, you you guys mesti kena follow, uh, yeah, follow the, follow the, 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 follow the current punya teknologis, um, follow the world punya teknologis. So, um, macam, macam saya juga, saya tak stop belajar sampai degree. I think last, uh, masa pandemik juga, kan? Saya ada ambil cert, professional cert juga untuk sama lah. Maksudnya sekarang ni kalau korang tahu, kalau dulu engineer ni tahu engineer electrical, engineer mechanical, engineer engineer civil kan. Tapi sekarang ni kalau korang tengok engineering ni club engineer pun ada ngah. Club engineer. Club. Ha. Club club. Oh, Ha. Pipeline engineer Dulu Pernah dengar kan? Dulu Pipeline engineer ni apa? Pipeline engineer ni yang orang kerja dekat offshore tu kan? Ya yeah. Tahu tak? Yang dia Buat test all for the pipeline everything Tapi sekarang ni kalau you guys Search pipeline engineer dekat job street Dia orang keluar apa? Dia keluar pipeline engineer yang In terms saya nak tekankan sebenarnya pipeline engineer tu adalah part engineer yang dalam IT. Faham tak? Maksudnya uh, sekarang ni pipeline engineer bukan pipeline engineer yang kat oil and gas. So pipeline engineer is all the coding, everything. Itu pun part of the engineer juga. 
So kalau kita tengok kat situ pun demand dia lagi tinggi. Hence why I I I go for a professional certificate certificate in in um uh it's called a, a data engineer. And so macam tu lah. Saya nak make sure I still relevant in this industry. I kena majukan diri I juga. Maksudnya I tak boleh nak mengharapkan mechanical punya engineer tu saja. So I kena adapt dengan uh, nowadays punya uh, technology. So apa yang saya dapat selepas saya job dapat certificate tu saya dapat offer kerja dekat Alcotec ni. Because of the certificate. So from that also as well apa yang you boleh dapat adalah sebenarnya you boleh demand in terms of the gaji and everything so make sure you guys uh, uh, sentiasa relevantkan diri korang dalam industri ni jangan stop sampai degree ni saja eh? make sure korang selalu buat research and everything uh, sebab dekat dunia ni memang sentiasa ada masalah bila orang dah move kan especially lepas covid orang dah move pada uh, IT everything is in online punya situation so dia akan lagi banyak penyimpanan cloud storage faham tak cloud storage and every, uh, maksudnya orang akan nak nak sediakan platform online tu semua problem mula-mula tapi siapa yang nak 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 create benda tu siapa nak create the platform Engineer lah. Cuma engineer apa? Engineer dalam orang panggil IT engineer. Faham tak? Ha, so dia engineer juga. So sebab tu lah dia lebih cepat. Sebab satu tadi siapa? Hazim eh. Ha, Hakim. Hakim tanya. Relevant ke engineering ni? Sebab engineering ni dia orang jangan tengok yang kena pegang sepanai, yang kena buat rumah, yang kena buat elektrik saja. Sekarang ni kalau nak make, make, nak tanya relevant tak relevant, in IT pun also dia dah ada engineer juga. Sebab engineer ni tugas dia solve the problem. So sekarang ni mostly mungkin banyak problem in terms of online maksudnya cloud punya problem, storage cloud. So perlukan problem solver. Problem solver tu lah engineer. So korang kena ada at least kena ada knowledge juga dalam ke arah IT ni saya rasa. Sebab sekarang ni IT ni dia tengah booming. So yeah to make your uh, you guys relevant you guys kena ada inisiatif uh, and work hard in, in 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 terms of research and never stop learning. Oh, never stop. Okay. Masih Cik Zan. Yeah. The okay, next next question, Cik Zan. Yeah. Uh, is there any opinion or words that you can give to people who say that the engineering field is very difficult? Yeah. Okay. Uh, maksudnya engineering field is very difficult means like in terms of the studies or in terms of the work work field study 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 okay so uh, okay right thank you Sharul eh uh, that is the kita tu boleh cakap most uh, typical uh, of the mindset of everybody lah yang tak ambil engineering pun dia akan cakap engineering ni memang susah I personally I cakap I tak sangkal benda tu and you guys also tengah study in, in, in engineering I mean in it's we can say that uh, top 10 of the hardest actually you know uh, of uh, subject or course yang susah dalam dunia ni kan selain daripada doktor and everything engineering also parts of parts of it and so uh, yeah I agree, memang susah. Tapi uh, kat kat dunia ni uh, memang tak ada benda yang senang-senang je korang nak boleh boleh dapat tanpa usaha. Faham tak? Means like kalau korang ada keinginan kat situ uh, uh, kejayaan akan datang lah. So, kenapa engineering ni susah? Sebab uh, kenapa uh, study engineering ni susah sebab bila korang keluar dalam uh, the real world punya situation kan bila experience kerja nanti korang merupakan salah satu di, diberi tanggungjawab yang besar dalam dunia ni faham tak 
contohnya lah contohnya nak buat jambatan kan kena ada civil engineer so to make sure the jambatan is safe for the world to use kan mestilah mestilah kena daripada orang yang betul-betul berkualiti untuk um, design untuk test to everything so sebab tu benda tu susah sebab benda tu akan bagi impact yang besar dekat dunia luar kita nanti faham tak so memang tak dapat disangkakan susah sama juga macam profession doktor korang nak selamatkan nyawa orang kan korang nak bedah nak potong dada orang sebab itulah dia punya study susah faham tak sebab dia punya uh, tanggungjawab dia besar and sangat-sangat penting kalau korang bina jambatan yang baru orang pakai setengah jam dah roboh and it melibatkan nyawa so of course this uh, kita punya kita punya uh, field ni adalah field yang ada tanggungjawab yang besar dekat dunia luar sana faham tak sama je kalau korang nak buat kereta nak buat apa-apa semua bukan korang je yang pakai betul tak mak ayah kita pun pakai jiran-jiran kita pun pakai so dia melibatkan uh, uh, dia akan Boleh impact ke- yes yes dia akan impact kepada dunia and tak dapat dinafikan juga bila benda tu tanggungjawab dia besar the reward, the reward also will be big as well tapi uh, ah yeah, ya untuk engineering ni uh, dia more to experience lagi experience korang lah barulah lagi korang boleh demand benda tu so ya yeah, memang orang cakap susah tapi dia ada reason kenapa benda tu susah faham tak So, uh, korang kena mindset dekat kepala korang yang korang study ni bukan untuk korang je sebab korang akan diberi tanggungjawab yang besar untuk dunia luar nanti. So, that's why uh, engineering is a very difficult. One of the course yang difficult to study lah. Tapi, once korang, tapi korang pun okay je kan? Semua okay lah. Ya. Okay, ya, lagi. Uh, dia dia as long as uh, macam mana kita uh, tak tahu tak tahu lah tapi kalau saya punya experience saya ambil uh, engineering ni saya saya punya line ni saya dah dah fokuskan since saya uh, form 4 lagi memang saya dah tegak mechanical saja sampai lah saya degree eh, saya since form 4 saya uh, masuk teknik Kuala Lumpur and I decided to take a mechanical engineering Mecha- mechanical engineering diploma pun in mechanical engineering uh, degree pun in mechanical engineering so uh, as a student uh, saya memang tak suka jadi uh, best student tapi saya tak power sukan Faham tak? Maksudnya, <laughs> maksudnya uh, ni 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 based on untuk uh, study apa student punya life lah. Uh, kita kena balance lah dua-dua kan. Untuk uh, wal- kita memang nak score dalam dalam subjek kita memang susah. Tapi saya nasihatkan juga supaya korang bersosial juga. Faham tak? Maksudnya Uh, rugi, rugi sangat kalau korang fokus study tapi korang tak ada uh, mean like um, kenangan among you guys faham tak? kalau macam saya saya fokus dekat sukan uh, so memang susah tapi sebab apa uh, saya challenge diri saya untuk uh, bahagikan masa sebab nanti waktu kerja pun macam tu juga. Korang akan dapat uh, depends lah. Nasib kan nasib lah. I mean like tengok lah rezeki masing-masing dapat company yang macam mana kan. Uh, and what what position you guys dapat nanti. So kadang-kadang tu uh, macam saya contoh kalau sekarang ni projek tengah banyak. Oh, sekarang ni memang busy. 
and then bila projek dah slowly dah settle nanti ah, baru tenang so dia ada bila projek busy tu bila kita busy tu kita kita kena pandai bahagi masa macam mana dengan wife dengan family kita kan kalau belum kahwin dengan parents kita dengan kawan-kawan kan so kita untuk it's also for our mental juga kalau kita terlalu fokus kerja je nanti tak jadi apa juga kan so korang kena train dari sekarang ni dengan subjek yang susah ni tapi korang kena ada time juga untuk you guys untuk create the memories during study life ni so don't, jangan orang luar mungkin cakap susah especially orang yang tak 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 pernah ambil yeah. engineering ni tapi you guys sekarang ni uh, bakal-bakal uh, penerima ijazah kan korang sendiri pun dah face dah sem 3 pun kan relax je kan tak ada apa pun memang susah tapi lepas je kan semua test semua exam pun lepas kan betul tak ha, tapi korang kena tanamkan kat diri korang kenapa korang belajar tu susah sebab esok lusa kat luar sana you guys have a big responsible to carry to the world okay so yeah so mungkin nak itu bagi sedikit uh, semangat untuk korang untuk face je apa yang susah study sekarang ni sebab soon or later you guys all of you guys insyaAllah akan jadi engineer juga as well ok so ya yeah. dalam kita mengejar score tu hmm. dalam masa sama kita kena ni lah uh, bersosial betul. dengan ketinggalan betul bersosial tu janganlah bagi yang tak baik maksudnya kan sosial yang tu sosial lah sama korang korang kena ada sangat-sangat rugi sangat-sangat rugi sebab bila korang dah pergi kerja nanti dia dah, dia dah, dah different tau dah different korang dah korang ada korang ada tanggungjawab lain I mean like korang akan tahu macam mana <laughs> nak susah nak cari duit betapa banyaknya komitmen selepas selepas uh, belajar ni kan macam-macam lah tiba-tiba dulu korang boleh survive je 500 dalam account kan tiba kalau kau dah habis belajar ni mak ayah pun dah tak bagi duit apa semua ui 5000 pun tak cukup ni <laughs> ha, so masa ni lah untuk orang uh, sebenarnya uh, bila saya cakap korang kena bersosial among you guys sebenarnya start from now korang dah kena ada create the connection networking faham tak Selain daripada korang create the networking with the experience Tapi korang kena kuat among you guys Sebab nanti Contoh Aiman dia dah pergi Contoh lah Aiman pergi engineer elektrik dekat Metronas dekat offshore sana Hakim pula pergi masuk Shell Haziq pula masuk TNB Contoh lah kan So korang among korang pun korang akan nanti uh, Akan share all the opportunity Betul tak? Nanti Syaru tanya Eh Haziq ada tak? kerja ke apa tapi so kalau korang tak ada I mean like the bonding start from now all the networking kan korang takkanlah Aziz nak bagi Charul baik dia bagi kat Hakim sebab dia lagi lagi rapat dengan Hakim faham tak so that's how uh, that's how important the networking even um, among you guys sebab kita tak tahu rezeki masing-masing kat mana kan kadang-kadang mungkin ada uh, among of my friend also dia macam lambat sikit dapat kerja kan so macam mana salah satu cara dia selain daripada korang pu uh, blast all your information and all your resume in the linkedin or all the carry fair ke among you guys ni sebenarnya kalau kita kita tak sedar sebenarnya kawan-kawan kita ni pun boleh cakap eh tempat aku ada ada kerja kosong tempat ni ada kerja kosong so that's why important of the networking so kalau korang create the strong bonding start from now so nanti of course bila dah keluar nanti korang pun nak kawan-kawan korang sama-sama berjaya so bila lepak masing-masing boleh tukar-tukar sekejap uh, Syaru belanja nanti Hakim pula belanja Aziz pula belanja kan so that's that's uh, the the networking and that's why what what I mentioned just now the social is very important lah social socialize among korang lah so the okay Aziz okay jadi kita networking tu boleh belajar lah ah. <laughs>
networking penting networking sangat penting sebab dalam industri ni kita kita tak boleh kita tak boleh uh, berdiri seorang pun hmm, mungkin ada tapi susah lah nak pergi jauh Eh, hey, korang kat satu tempat ke semua? Tak, tak, Dekat UTHM ke? Tak. Kat rumah masing-masing. Syarul dengan Azik? Saya, Azik dengan Hazim satu rumah. Oh, rumah rumah sewa. Ha, rumah ya, sewa. Siapa? Azik, Syarul dengan Hazim. Hazim, ha. Well, yang Aiman dengan Hakim dekat rumah sewa lain. Ha. Hmm. Oh, hmm. tapi tak dekat Johor lah. Dekat, dekat Johor lah hmm. semua ha. ni. Semua dekat Johor. Hmm. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Belum balik raya haji Belum balik raya cuti raya bila? Rabu Rabu, Rabu. Hmm. Oh, Tunggu lah Lambat Tunggu lah <laughs> tapi Lambat kan Contoh saya Kamis dia cuti Jumat masuk balik <laughs> oh, <laughs> Enjoy enjoy Student life ni Cuti mesti banyak kan eh. <laughs> Next Next Pula. Conclusion lah mm-hmm. Okay so Thank you Mr. Shazban for sharing Your educational background And mm-hmm. journey in engineering mm-hmm. We appreciate your time And willingness to shed light On your impressive achievement mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Your expertise And passion in the field of engineering So as an inspiration To aspiring professional To our viewer, we hope you found this interview enlightening and it has given you a valuable insight into the world of engineering. And thank you for your joining us today and we look forward for bringing you more engagement, engaging interview in the future and have a great day. So thank you everyone. Terima kasih lah kalian semua. Eh, terbalik tu. Orang yang betul terima kasih. <laughs> Tapi terima kasih. rasa saya say sorry lah kalau ada mana-mana yang terkurang rasanya banyak yang kurang tu. Tak, banyak yang ada. Okay. And teruskan, teruskan usaha untuk jangan pernah give up untuk habiskan belajar. Lagi berapa sem je kan? Sebab... Yeah. Pengalaman dulu saya belajar, ada juga orang kawan-kawan yang sampai separuh jalan, sayang. Sayang. Separuh jalan kan, dia give up, tak boleh go. Tapi ada juga yang sampai uh, SEM 10, baru habis. Ha, tapi tak nak lah, korang tak nak lah, korang mesti kena on time lah kan. Sebab rugi masa, tapi jangan pernah give up lah, jangan pernah give up masing-masing ada bawa apa orang kata tanggungjawab yang besar kan daripada keluarga and banyak family kita dah orang kata apa dah spend banyak kan untuk kita sama study semua and memang agak klise nasihat ni tapi korang akan rasa once korang dah orang kata dah mungkin sekarang dah dewasa dah tapi nantilah dah, dah masuk dalam pekerjaan apa semua korang akan tahu the dia nilai and korang akan kenang balik apa benda yang korang buat semua ni dekat study so macam satu kenangan yang indah lah kan memang dia akan perit sekarang sebab penat study korang nak kena bangun apa bangun bangun apa orang kata bangun malam lah nak 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 oh, siapkan oh. assignment everything kan tapi benda tu akan ada kemanisan lah selepas bila korang dah dapat sebelum ijazah tu nanti Benda tu memang akan rasa, tapi kalau kau orang give up, kau orang takkan rasa benda tu. So, jangan berhenti, jangan berhenti berusaha, jangan berhenti bekerja keras and and nanti uh, kau orang punya cabaran yang betul-betul start bila tau sebenarnya. Bila kau orang dah habis belajar, nanti kau orang nak cek kerja. Itu yang sebenarnya. Sekarang ni kau orang sama, kau orang belajar sama-sama. Bezanya masing-masing punya pointer je lah kan. Tapi as long as kau orang pass benda tu and please target uh, untuk cemerlang higher. Uh, higher kalau boleh dapat dekan sebab dia punya perbezaan mungkin kau orang boleh dapat semua boleh dapat kerja tapi pointer tu memberi 
usually untuk big company lah kan untuk big company contoh macam MNC all the uh, big big company ni dia orang ada beribu-ribu graduates yang apply kan tapi apa hmm. yang dia, mana dia nak pilih of course dia akan pilih salah satunya pointer yang tinggi lah sebab Uh, kalau korang dapat placingkan diri korang tu dekat company yang uh, company-company besar ni mungkin kelebihan dia korang punya masing-masing ada kelebihan lah company kecil pun ada kelebihan company besar pun ada kelebihan tapi kalau korang nak good start in terms of korang punya career punya background kan cantik oh, kalau orang, <laughs> orang tengok sekali tengok oh dia ni dah masuk company besar kat Malaysia typical is the Petronas ke Shell ke everything kan TNB ke oh, kalau orang akan macam oh wow and korang punya salary pun starting pun dah dah tinggi nanti so that that's why kenapa orang kata uh, go for for a higher punya pointer lah kan? kalau dapat dekan tu lagi bagus lah uh, tapi untuk da- untuk jadi student yang berkualiti of course bukan sahaja pointer semata-mata sebab tu saya cakap tadi, kalau saya, saya suka pergi dua-dua. Sports pun saya target paling tinggi and pointer pun saya target paling tinggi. Tak adalah tinggi tapi uh, I manage to uh, grad in a first first class punya uh, uh, grad. Tapi saya tak pernah tinggal sukan saya. Saya main sukan pun sampai uh, paling tinggi saya pernah pergi in a national punya, uh, punya level. So, uh, bila saya sampai sekarang saya puas hati. Ha, ada orang dia macam oh dia nak dia rasa macam ralat tak buat tu tak buat ni tapi kalau sampai sekarang every time apa yang saya fikir masa saya degree dulu saya rasa puas hati. Saya saya tak tinggal apa benda pun. <laughs> And even uh, esok exam kan saya still pergi untuk tournament Sabtu Ahad ni Isnin exam <laughs> sampai still go. And ni bukan nak belagak tapi saya nak bagi motivasi motivasi lah kat korang and I still manage to get an A untuk uh, subjek yang Isnin tu so puas hatilah bila kita dapat benda tu so jangan jangan limitkan main FIFA 2 3 pagi normal tapi jangan sampai uh, korang kecundang betul tak <laughs> siapa ambil diploma kat sini satu pun Oh semua ambil diploma. So kalau ikut ikut pengalaman saya lah eh, masa saya belajar dulu dia ada beza tau. Student yang ada diploma and student yang uh, ada dia, 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 dia teruskan dia terus apa dia ambil means like uh, dia matrix eh matrix ke asasi ke kan. Asasi. Uh, masa kita orang dulu dia different tau. Student yang ada diploma ni dia lagi macam dia lagi matang sikit ah dia lagi uh, biasa umur pun dia lagi besar kan dia lagi korang pun mesti lagi si, si, umur in terms of umur kalau compare masuk kelas tu uh, memang yang ada degree holder tu dia lagi nampak matang sikit lah <laughs> betul kan eh? so sebab apa sebab kita dah pernah ambil diploma mungkin ada kesilapan dekat diploma tu kita dah kita akan learn during the degree sebab masa saya diploma dulu taklah cemerlang sangat uh, tapi saya sebab apa kita dah buat lah kita dah yeah, berjaga ha, dah experience 2-3 malam duduk main game je masa degree dah tak ada dah degree pukul 11 dah tidur lah dah <laughs> And, tapi sebab kita busy kan training apa semua balik tidur bangun study ha, kita. so I believe lah korang ni semua muka-muka yang uh, cemerlang-cemerlang ni. Eh? Yeah? <laughs> InsyaAllah. Okay. So itu je lah. So all the best yeah. to you guys and hopefully uh, sentiasa dimurahkan rezeki dan dipermudahkan segala urusan. InsyaAllah. Kamu juga dengan Cik Syazwan. Terima kasih. InsyaAllah. Terima kasih Cik Syazwan. Alright, alright. Atas no nasihat. Alright, no worries. Thank you.